And the Patriots have won their sixth Super Bowl title. We got teams calling you in the draft, like, hey, we got a pick here in the fourth round. We're going to pick you. And I look at the TV, and it's somebody else. And I'm like, what? Like, you have a guy call you and say, hey, we, you know, we got a pick here in the fifth round. You know, uh, be on the lookout. We, you know, we might going to select you here. Somebody else's name. I got my family, my friends. You know, we having a cookout. You know, they're telling me I'm getting drafted. Like, this is what the four-year-old kid envisioned happening. Like, this is everything we've done. My parents, like, all the sacrifices y'all made, everything, everybody. This is what this, this day is for. Like, this is our moment. And you get to the end of the draft, and it don't happen. You know, and I talked to Coach Belichick. He's like, man, you come here, you know. We're going to give you an opportunity. Give you an opportunity. Jackson over the middle. He gets and so I end up going for going to New England and man, here we are eight years later. I just don't make people understand like, what an undrafted free agent means. It means like you're doomed to not make it. Welcome to the Get Back Podcast, where we're bringing you the biggest get back stories from the biggest names. I'm Zeke Pike. I'm here with my co-host, Greg Kelly, and I'm honored today to bring to you a good friend of mine, eight-year NFL veteran, 2023 Ron Burton Award winner, 2023 Walter Payton Man of the Year Award nominee, a husband, a father, a philanthropist, Two-time Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots' very own Jonathan Jones. Welcome to the Get Back, my brother. My God, appreciate you for having me. Appreciate you for having me. So, man, I'm I'm for those of you that don't know, when I when I first came out of high school, I went to I went to Auburn University, and I remember 2011. You come in, it was you, Josh Hosley. Um, you know, a handful of guys, and man, I remember thinking to myself, this guy's little. <laughs> like, straight up, that was my first thought. I'm like, man, this guy's little, but he's fast. Yeah. He's fast, man. What, what, is your, what is your story, man? Because again, I, I knew you as you got to Auburn. I watched your career unfold at Auburn. I watched, you know, you've now be super successful in the NFL. But I want to hear about Jonathan Jones from a kid growing up to where you're at now. And take me through that journey, man. What was that like for you? Man, um, appreciate that. I always hear that, um, just my size, and I always let that fuel me. But man, football has been my passion uh, since I was four, year, four years old. That's all I wanted to do was just play football. Um, and then I begged my parents to play, you know, at that age, and you know they found a place for me to play. Uh, and I began, you know, playing the game, falling in love with it year after year. Um, you know, doing track it made me uh, made me fast. And I learned the fundamentals of running and things like that doing doing track. But man, football was always my passion. Uh, year in and year out, you know, every every team I was on, always the fastest, you right. know, the best guy, the go-to guy on the team, you know, go through high school. You know, I went to Carrollton High School. You know, if you know anything about Georgia football, it's a staple. You That's know, Carrollton High School is a staple, you know, for, for for high school football. And, you know, got the opportunity to play, you know, at Auburn, to, you know, come down and meet you, you know, down there. And like I said, I just kept that mentality. Like, I've always heard I was too small, too, 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 too this, too that. And, yeah. you know, I just always kept that to prove people wrong. Yeah. So Carrollton, so Carrollton, Georgia, right? Yeah. But it's is it is it is that that's the city, Carrollton? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So coming out of high school, and again, I, I you know, I, it seems like ages since I was in high school. It's it's crazy how much has unfolded in my life, obviously in your life. But coming out of high school, right? Like, what was what was your recruitment like? Because again, you know, obviously you ended up at Auburn at the time. You know, defending national champions, right? Auburn was really kind of on the come up at this point in time. What was what was that process like when you really got into high school in your recruitment process? What what took you to Auburn? And obviously, you know, having people tell you you're undersized, I'm sure there was plenty of schools that slept on you. There was plenty of plenty of schools that turned their head away from you. You know, what was what was that that decision from Carrollton to to, to get you to the point to Auburn? What was that decision like, and, and what what took you there? Man, it was a lot, man, to go into that story. I don't think it's a lot of this story I never really shared before. Um, I heavily recruited just because of the athlete that I was, but like I said, there was some schools that was I was undersized. Uh, I mean, I can remember Alabama, you know, they signed a guy from JUCO uh, and then another guy from Georgia, you know, and I called them like, hey, y'all got a spot for me? They was like, nah, 
You know, we got our guys, we gonna rock with them. Right. And there was a couple of schools, you know, that wanted me to come to camp. You know, Georgia was like, hey, come to our big dog camp. You know, but this time Auburn had already offered me, uh, Mississippi State, Tennessee, some other schools had already offered me. So How I, many total offers did you have? I couldn't count. Like I said, <laughs> I, I had a lot of offers yeah, just right. from, from everywhere, you know, from Ivy League, just from the education, Ivy League, yeah. Stanford. Like I had a lot, a lot of offers. But it was still, oh, we don't know. You know, you can't do this. You're a small guy. Still a small time recruit, you know, three star athlete. Um, I was running track during the summer. So, like, that's when a lot of football camps are going on. So, um, they're youth like, hey, champion hurdle. youth world champion, you know. So, got yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the, you know, schools were like, hey, come to our camp. And I'm like, I can't. You know, I'm running track. I have this going on. Yeah. Um, so, when I went down to Auburn, they had a camp. And um, they getting hit out of L money, so I can share this story now. I went, I went down to Auburn for a camp. And, you know, my dad had lost his job. Um, so, we have money. We have insurance. Mm -hmm. So, um, the coach there was like, hey, we'll... Don't worry about paying for the camp. Don't worry about the insurance waiver. We'll, we'll take care of all of that. And so they, they, they handled it. You know what I mean? They made sure I was good. I could come in. I could, just for the camp. This wasn't like to come down. They handled that. Yeah. And they gave me an offer. And I was like, like I reciprocated that energy. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, they looked out for me, you know, in a time where, like I said, it was, it was a tough time at that point. You know, this was the uh, housing crisis. You know, my dad was, you know, caught up in that, lost his job. Right. And so, you know, they were like, hey, come down here. You know, coach kind of. Made some things happen to where I had to worry about the registration fee and all that stuff for the camp. And, you know, it was close enough to home, close enough to home. I can get yeah. back big on family. And it was, it was loyalty's a, big for you, too. Loyalty's big yeah. for me, you know, and they looked out for me and it only made sense for me to go there. Absolutely. So at Auburn, obviously, there was a ton that happened. And, you know, you guys went from having a really bad freshman year, right, where it was, you know, a lot of changes, um, you know. For, for me, I remember kind of looking at it as like, you know, you go f to play for the defending Nash champions and it was like, you, what, three and six or something, I think? Yeah. It was the freshman year for, for you guys was rough. And I had left right after spring, right? But obviously transitioning in, what was what was your role as you got into Auburn? You know, what was, what was your playing time like early on? And, and how did that kind of progress? Because again, in order for you to even get the opportunity in the league, I mean, you had some significant opportunities at Auburn, right? For sure. I think it started when I got there and just doing the spring. Like I said, I was always the smallest guy, but I was right. always the strongest guy. And okay. I always worked out with linebackers, defensive end. Like I was just always one of the strongest guys. Um, always one of the strongest guys. And I kept that, just work hard, work hard. And some yeah. of the older guys was like, hey, if you want to be on this team, you want to make this team, you know, make it on special teams. Like if you want to mm -hmm. be at the game on Saturdays, yeah, yeah. make it on special teams. And I was like, all right, like that's what I want to do. I want to be at the game. I mean, you've been enjoying hair, man. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is not be at the game right. when it's going on. And so I, I did that. You know, I made sure, you know, special teams, I made sure I was active. I was there for the game. Uh, and then I just progressed as a player, you know, got better. I was like, you know, you come out of high school, everybody has a different um, level of understanding of football. Right. You know, everybody's got different yeah. levels of coaching. And I think once I got to Auburn, you know, that excelled my level of coaching. I was able to understand the game at a different level. Or, you know, by the, by the year, middle of the year, I'm starting, mm. you know, starting that corner. Um, I said, we're terrible, you know? So I really, that, that's what gave me opportunity. You know, I think coach was just like, somebody's gotta get it right, you know? And so yeah. eventually got my opportunity to start. But like, that was a terrible year, man. We was on curfew. We're three and nine, we got curfew. Guys getting arrested, you know? It was just, it was a tough space yeah. because it's not what you, and I went, went to Auburn for, you know? You defending right. national championships, you go there to win. You go there yeah. to win championships. But when you walked in the building and now looking back on it, there was a lot of complacency in the building from the top down, you know, from, from head coach, yeah. coaches, that was a lot of, oh, we're Auburn, you know, we've, we're, we we just was in the national championship, but that's not what gets you back there, you know? And so that yeah. was a lot of that, you know, coming into my freshman year. And so they fired, you know, fired that coaching staff and you could see- So this results. is just because again, obviously with what I went through, right? College was like a, a, fa like a fog for me, bro. Like yeah. there was so much of my life that was just so chaotic at that time. This is like what 2013 season was crazy, right? Yeah. Chizik, 2012. 2012. 2012 yeah. Okay, then Chizik Chizik got fired. Got fired. 2013. Yep. Yep. And Gus came back. Gus came in. Yep. Gus and it's funny back. because I I went to play for Malzahn. That yep. was why I went yeah, there, right? And I remember I was at the, I was actually at the Army game and he called. He's like, "Hey, I'm going to Arkansas State. Probably don't want to come here, but you know." When Malzahn comes back. What shifted at Auburn? Because there was clearly a quick shift in, you know, just the overall culture. I think the overall energy and to see like a team be, you know, the prior season look 
really just like discombobulated to like really looking like there was order back in that program. What what came from Malzahn and like what came back into that program that you feel was was the change that kind of you know because again you guys go back and play Florida State in the national championship. Yeah, like I said, the culture, man, that complacency of we are Auburn had left the building mm. and it started from the bottom up, like from the head coach. Nobody had won anything, you know. He wasn't this national champion winning coach, you know. He's done it as an assistant, but you know, no, he was at the ground. You know, all the guys in there was at the bottom up, um, and we kind of took that mentality. And so I just say day in and day out, like it was just fighting. It was just, you know, competing, you know, it started from the guys competing. And then we didn't have a quarterback, you know, our freshman year. I'm not, I'm not gonna point fingers to why we didn't have a quarterback. We needed a quarterback, man. We really did, bro. And I think that's why, you know, highly recruited guy, we needed a guy like yeah. you, you know, yeah. at quarterback, bro. We didn't have that. And so coming back, Nick Marshall had transferred over from Georgia. So mm -hmm. we got a quarterback, you know, Georgia didn't believe in him. You yeah. know, another underdog guy, Georgia didn't believe in him. And he was a dog in college. <laughs> that boy was a dog. Dog, dog a killer. Georgia didn't believe in him. You know, Georgia got an opportunity. So this, this is, this is kick six season. Kick six season, 2013, you know, it, it's just through the year, we started with no expectations. We were three and three and nine the year before. No one was hollering Auburn for the national. Right, you guys were just completely locked in and focused on you guys. Focus on ourselves, and so week in and week out, we got better. We got better. You know, winning games, winning games. You look up in the middle of the season, like, oh, we got a team here. Yeah, like, you know, and, and that's what football is about. We got a team here. Right. We got guys who are good. We got good on defense, good on offense, good on special teams. Like we have a team, and you know. Towards the back end of that that year, I mean, we have some things like anytime you go to a championship, you're gonna need some things to fall your way. Uh, we get the Hail Mary play versus Georgia. Oh, right, I forgot about people that. People forget Ricardo. people the kicks, bro. The kick sick was so crazy. People forget about the Hail Mary yeah, that happened yeah. two weeks before that. Yeah, like fourth right, down Hail right. Mary play. You know what I mean? That's right. And so you have that, and then you turn around, like I said, kick six, and it was just. What was it like being a part of that? Because I'll be honest, I remember watching this right. I had so much guilt and shame just from my own, you know, some of the things I, I self-sabotage in my career. But I remember watching you guys, right? I remember watching this unfold. And it was exactly like you said, sometimes in championship seasons, things just got to fall your way. You're watching this happen and you're saying, it's just their year. Yeah. Like just the way things are falling in place. What was that like being there? Because I know what it's like to be on Auburn's campus when Auburn's winning. It's wild. It's crazy. What was it like being a part of it that year? And again, going from a, a season where, you know, not that those fans ever become unloyal, but there was definitely frustration around Auburn. You know, that's not what they were used to, yeah. you know, in the last couple of years. And you have this bad season, then you guys bounce back the way you guys bounce back. What was it like being a part of that? But being a big contribution to that team and, you know, rallying the troops to get back to, to go play for a title game. Man, it was, it was crazy. You know, thinking back, I'm not forgot, I, was, I started the season hurt. I, had hurt. I got hurt in training camp that year. So I missed the first, you know, five weeks of the season and fall back to injury to be there. But just fighting back to wanting to be a part. Cause like you're seeing the things that are going on, man. Over, it's a special place, man. Yeah. Especially when the winning. When the football team is winning, there's no place like it. There's no place like it. I mean, you the campus is crazy, you know. Um, just everything goes your way, man. Everything goes your way when you're winning, you know, at Auburn. The atmosphere is crazy and and it's unforgettable. Man, those are the memories you take with you forever just because like you can't match it. You know, I tell people now, like I played in the NFL, I played in a lot of big games, but Yeah. Nothing beats college. Nothing beats college football, man. SEC college game, game day. college game day, yeah, man. I'm personally I'm a big college football fan. Like I love <laughs> watching I would say that if you tell me like ask me what my teams are, I'll name more college teams than NFL teams just because of the electric atmosphere of just these kids getting out there and earning their spots and 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 just just the passion behind it. But I think I mean? that was part of the reason why I even went to Auburn to begin with. Was like, I mean, you remember getting recruited and going to those games and watching Cam walk into the end zone and step up <laughs> on that brick ledge and put his hands in the air mm -hmm. and that place erupted. Crazy. It was nuts. It was like no other, right? Crazy. I mean, it's one of a kind. Crazy, man. Student section, crazy. I mean, it's my top three. You know, you can't forget LSU. Yeah. LSU will get crazy, but man, Auburn, man, when you walk out there and it's game day and you winning and it's a night game, and like you said, just the energy, man. Just the energy. It's unmatched. So, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Quick. How do you feel about Texas getting into the SEC? I mean, they, you think they're going to be good? You think they're going to do all right? They'll be good. They'll yeah. do good. I think they they Texas, as a state from high school football, Yeah, yeah. they got everything they need. And just you can throw in, hey, you get to play. 
Alabama, Auburn, it's still LSU. Texas, man. You're still talking about the one school, yeah. You know, outside of like a Notre Dame or like you know, they're a prominent school. There's Texas, Texas. Man. Texas See, yeah. I'm finishing up. You're talking money, I'm bro. Up money, <laughs> money talks. I'm, like, Texas. Up. I'm kind of biased because I'm a Longhorn because I'm finishing up my last couple of hours in yeah. college at Texas, but. But yeah, man, I'm I'm excited for those guys and to see what they do because they dominated this year. Yeah. You know, they dominated. So let me ask you this because I'm genuinely curious. You mentioned you got hurt, right? And you had you had some difficulties. Like, what what were some of the things that you had faced up to this point in your career that you had to overcome? Again, a lot of people don't understand that in order for you to have a successful career in football things just kind of got to fall your way sometimes. Like yeah. they got to fall your way. And again, to be able to have injuries, overcome injuries, but you're constantly competing, you're playing in the SEC, they're trying to bring a dude in every year to replace you. Yeah. You know, I mean, what were some of the things that you had faced at this point, whether it be, you know, growing up high school to get to this point to where you're at now in college football at this point in time, what were some of the difficulties that you were facing or you had to overcome at that point, point in time in your life? Man... We'd be here all night. If I, if I started to talk about just the adversity along my journey, I mean, honestly, we'd be here all night. From like growing up, I mean, I transferred schools, you know, as a, as a young kid, and I, you, you, that, you know how that goes. You come into a school, you're kind of good at sports, no one likes you, you know, because you're going to come yeah. in, you're going to take the shine from, yeah. from certain guys. So I mean, I dealt with that growing up to, you know, getting to college. You can look up the YouTube um, video now from my college video going to Auburn and it has my teammates picture on it. I felt, disres felt disrespected, wow. yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It has, you know, my, it's my good friend, TJ. You know, TJ, TJ Davis, he came yeah. in with me. It has, it has his picture. Well, you guys were at the same high school. No, 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 no. he's no. from Florida. He's from oh. Florida. So on the, on, the, on the video, you know, the Auburn, they'll create a video okay. to yeah. show to the alumni and, and yeah. who they're bringing in. And my video had his, his picture on it. So that was shots. It was, yeah, yeah, it's like you you didn't matter you enough to at least get my picture right. right? Yeah. You know, coming into college. So I had that chip on my shoulder when I got there. You know, you start at the bottom of the depth chart when I got to college, because like everybody felt like you. You know, I mean he's small. What can he do? What can he do? Um, you know, I had a head coach, one of our head coaches that recruited me. Um, he said in the meeting, he said, Hey, you can't play safety. You're not big enough. Like you you could never play safety. He's like, Josh Hosey could play safety, but but you couldn't. I mean, I played safe, started safety in the Super Bowl in the NFL. So it's just it's Ooh, so yeah. it's so many different things. So going undrafted, went undrafted. I had a coach in college. You know, he wasn't going to start me. You know, my sophomore year, he wasn't going to start me because he said, um, "He's like you're, you're not good enough at tackling." I was like, "I'm one of the best tackling. That's what I do, like tackling." So, so what is what is it that you think that was instilled in you, or that you've been able to carry with you? Because I'll be honest. I'm a type of dude that like, I need affirmation in my life. Like yeah. I, I need somebody to tell me like, hey, you know, you're, you're good, you're doing good. At least when I was th throughout my career, I fueled off that, right? Yeah. So for you being a guy who, when we talk about the get back, we talk about underdog stories, you know, your own coaches are sleeping on you, right? You know, the, the people that brought you in are, are still telling you, you're not big enough, you're not this, you're not that. What was it that you think in your mind was was it you know what what was it that growing up was like instilled into you that allows that to not even be a factor to you like that became motivation for you what 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 was that for you man my dad bro yeah like my dad is like one of the toughest people i ever met mm. like mentally physically yeah like you didn't get i didn't get no easy days growing up mm. you know like that's just that was my life like my dad, I come from track practice. He's like, man, the grass better be cut, you know, before I get home. We're talking about July, middle of Georgia. Like, just, it better be done before I get home. Like, that was just my upbringing of, yeah, like, yeah. nobody's going to give you anything. You know, anything. So work any, ethic was instilled into It was instilled into me. Like, yeah. I, that's all I knew. So, like, when people people quit, like, it's foreign to me because I, don't, I, don't, I can't relate to that. Like, that's just not what I know. It's not how right. I was brought up. Like, my dad just, that was never going to fly his household of just... I was, it was just instilled in me, like growing up, like you can't quit. Like it's not even an option, so you better figure it out. Right. And then kind of the, the opposite of that, I enjoyed the feeling of like, I told you so. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah, I, you got I, something to prove. Yeah, and I don't have to say it. Yeah. Like I showed you. Yeah. So like I showed you, like you can't, you can't say I can't do something when I showed you. That's good. That's so huge. That's Whenever good. you're at Auburn, did you, 
Did you start in the special teams? Like, did is that was that your first foothold? Oh yeah, career? that that was the first. It was the first thing. How much did you play your freshman year? I don't. I, I can't even. I start. I didn't start on defense till like middle of the year. Once we was terrible. Like we was terrible, and at that point, yeah, coaches yeah, was yeah. like, <laughs> they were just like, whatever. We'll try anybody at yeah. this point. And then I was like, oh, he, yeah. he might be all right. <laughs> it was just finally got that opportunity. People, yeah. man, people don't understand how important special team effort in the sport, special teams is like. When it comes to people like like you, you know, the undersized dogs out there that are trying to prove something, they have a chip on their shoulder that, you know what, like all this stuff's been said to me. Like I know EJ Speed, he plays for the Colts. He he was special team player of the year. Like like he 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 got a starting position as a linebacker just because he showed out. He didn't take a playoff. I mean, he shined in the special teams. Uh, whenever I was in high school, the only reason why I got up and after the starting safety got um, um, injured. The only reason is because I never took a playoff in special teams. And, like, people don't give special teams credit, man. They don't give it enough. But that's huge, you know. And, I mean, yeah. my dad played 13 years in the NFL, and he legitimately he backed up Bruce Smith. He was a special teams player. It's Dude. a little bit different now in the NFL. I think back then, I don't even now it's 53. I think there was a few more players back then. But it's funny that you end up at the Patriots because it seems like in New England, I mean, yeah. coming in as an undrafted free agent, you better, you're going to play special teams or you ain't going to be here very long. Yeah. Like that was, that was, that was probably it, man. I'm, I'm genuinely curious when you were in going from having a really bad season to then, you know, again, getting recruited, you're seeing Auburn and you're like, man, like I want to play in the national championship, right? Like that was like, obviously when we got recruited coming out class 2012, we wanted to go win a national championship. Like that was why we went there. Right. There. Now you get back there. What was that experience like to to get there and it obviously not in, in in the way that you guys wanted to? What was that experience like and then what was that feeling like and how did that carry over? Because you had another two seasons, two seasons after that, right? Yeah. You went yeah. through another two more seasons. Yeah. Um, it was a lesson. Uh it generally was because like you said, it's what we what we did it for. Like that was the whole point of going to Auburn, the whole point of the off season, training camps two a day, it's like you do all of that to get to that moment and then you fail, like ultimately you fail. You're, you're, yeah. you're like the team who went three and nine at the end of the day because you don't you do not do the ultimate goal and that's the, the thing about football, there's only one goal and that's to win at the end and anything short of that mm. is a failure for a season. Um, yeah. So I mean, it was an honor to be there but at, ultimately we fail. Um, and so, you know, we kind of came back the next year and we had our hopes on going back. We had a good team, a lot of guys coming back, quarterback, like. I, I genuinely feel like the team we had the next year was a better team, you know, but the thing about football is you're fighting that battle of complacency, kind of yeah. like I talked about our, our my freshman year's team. You're, you're fighting that I've been here before mentality. You know, we'll just bounce back. We'll pick back up where we left off, and um, it just didn't happen like that. You know, our junior year, you know, that ended up being my best year, all SEC, uh, led the you know, SEC in interceptions. So that was, you know, my best year. Um, and then I ended up getting hurt the last game of that, that season. So that's when you're battling. Do I come out? Do I stay? Um, what what happened? Uh, toe surgery. So I'm having toe surgery. Um, and that's your, that was your senior year? No, that was my junior year. Junior I was going to come out after my junior okay. year. It's all SEC. Led, the, led them. That was a sophomore year, SEC championship. Like, everything is going my way at this point. You couldn't. I was on top of the world. Yeah. Like, yeah. I had made, like, this, my junior year for me in my career, it was my final year of, like, Everybody doubted me. Look at me now. Yeah, like yeah, I'm, yeah. I proved it all wrong. You know, all SEC. You know, we're winning games. You know, I'm on top. And like I said, I, I get hurt, and I'm contemplating like, do I come out? Um, you know, what's going on? That's when I had my daughter. You know, going. You know, having my daughter going into my senior season. So they're like, hey, you know, you can red shirt. You never use your red shirt. I'm like, like nah, like that's not that's not gonna work. We ain't have nil. We ain't getting paid. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it's like nah, like I gotta go make some money. I gotta, I gotta go do my thing. So I end up having toe surgery. You know, my senior year, I never practiced. Like, I never practiced. Most people didn't know that I never practiced. I wore, you know, um, Armour is under Armour. Yeah. I had to wear Nike. I wore Nike cleats, spattered them up. I never practiced. I play on Saturdays, and I'm I can't walk the rest of the week just because I can't red shirt. And so I finally, you know, make it through that season. You know, we have a decent year. We're not, we're not too good. This is your senior season? My senior? senior year. Senior year. Wow. And you got to be super frustrated. Frustrated. I, it's a lot going on. I mean, my, you know, you go from places. feeling your best, playing your best, to now you're like on maintenance trying to make it to Saturday just to feel good enough to get to the game. Yeah, I mean, for sure. But I got a lot of things outside of it, life going on. You know what I'm saying? I got a newborn. My daughter's, born, to figure my out daughter's born in September. So my daughter's born in September, like, 
three days before our first game. So oh, yeah. I fly, I catch a flight, make my daughter's birth back Saturday for our first game, you know, yeah. first game off of toe surgery. Like it was just that whole season was, when you talk about a blur, that whole season for me was that. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up, kid crying all night, and then you wake up, go to study hall, go to class, mm -hmm. you know, workouts, football practice, back home. Like it was, my senior year was, was, was a blur. And so battling the injury that whole time, and so I finally started to get healthy towards the end of the year, go to Combine, get invited to Combine Senior Bowl. I show yeah. up at Senior Bowl, and I mean, you can watch the tape to this day. I was the best cornerback, you know, at Senior Bowl. Go, go to the Combine, have a good Combine, and still end up, you know, going undrafted. Speaking of the Combine, it's, it's Combine, Combine weekend. You ran pretty good at the Combine, didn't you? Yeah. I was healthy again. So, so you were going into the combine. You felt I felt healthy. Again. You felt, I felt like me. I yeah. felt I felt yeah. like myself, like senior. I remember you. You ran a really good. Yeah. It was like four three one. Yeah, you. Yeah, I remember really you were cooking. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like just to feel like myself again, you know. And I still go and draft it, you know. And that was the so through that process, right? You, you obviously senior year's done, combine. What was what was what was your what was going on through your mind? Because I'm assuming maybe go, coming out of your junior year, you probably felt like you maybe had a better opportunity to to to, to go and get drafted at a place you probably want to get drafted versus now you probably have teams where like I don't know how healthy is we don't you know X Y and Z a lot of red flags that they're yeah. you know doing doing their due diligence on. What, what was your mindset? Did, were you preparing to get drafted? Sure. Like, were that? Did you have teams telling you, like, hey, you know, if you if you're around, we're gonna take you. Yeah, yeah. So like, projected, you know, coming out third, fourth round, fourth round, um, late third, fourth round projection. Um, and yeah, a lot of teams spoke with a lot of teams. Uh, Pittsburgh brought me in for a visit. So like, I, things was trending. I'm like, hey, maybe they know, you know, I'm back healthy. I've shown them, hey, yeah. I'm back. I'm back to that player you saw in my junior year. You know, you saw me at um, Senior Bowl. You saw me at the combine. You saw that I'm healthy. So hopefully. You know, all those red flags go away, but I think at the end of the day, they're still saying, ah, he's a small guy and he got hurt. You know, I think a lot of those, you know, compounded. But like, even in the draft, um, you got teams calling in the draft, like, hey, we got a pick here in the fourth round. We're going to pick you. And I look at the TV and it's somebody else. And I'm like, what? Like, I, you, I ain't know those things went on. It's my, you yeah. know, it's your first time going through the draft. You don't know those things go on. Like, you have a guy call you and say, hey, you know, we got a pick here in the fifth round. You know, uh, be on the lookout. You know, we might going to select you here. Somebody else's name. So it's just like, you sitting there. I mean, that process had to be super frustrating, though. I'm assuming you haven't draft parties, you're having people over, and it's just like, it, it probably was a little bit embarrassing, a little yeah. bit, you know, frustrating. Whoa. Worst day of my life. One of the worst yeah. days of my life. Yeah. yeah. You know, just because I'm not, a, I'm not the type of guy to set expectations. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, I'm not going to tell you what I want to do. I'm just do it, yeah. and you see it. But this one, for me, it was like, oh, man. I got my family, my friends, you know, we having a cookout, you know, they're telling me I'm getting drafted. Like, this is what the four year old kid envisioned happening. Like, this is everything we've done. My parents, like, all the sacrifices y'all made, everything, yeah. everybody, this is what this, this day is for. Yeah. Like, this is our moment. And you get to the end of the draft and it don't happen. Like, it's. So, the crazy thing is that this is what this podcast is all about is that you're at this moment, this is like the worst day of your life. You're in this situation where your whole family's there and what you've been working so hard for, there's a glimpse that it's not happening right now. How do you respond? Uh, you got 24 hours to feel bad for yourself. There you go. And then you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. Like you got to go from there. Um, so did you have options? I'm assuming you had, you had, you had, you could have probably went a couple of different places. Couple places, couple places. A lot of people was calling, hey, we want to come in, you know, but I talked, Coach Belichick called me personally. So I talked to Coach Belichick after the draft. Uh, and then Arizona, that's when, um, God, so Coach, that was at Arizona, Bruce, Bruce oh, Aarons. Bruce Aarons was still at um, Arizona. So I was back and forth between New England and Arizona. Like, hey, what should I do? I'm asking my mom, like, hey, you know, wh where should I go? What should I do? Um, and I had another teammate, Brandon King, who had been at New England. He was a special teams player. You know, I called him. He was like, hey, man. They really give guys opportunities here. You know, and I talked to Coach Belichick, and he said the same thing. He's like, man, you come here, you know. We're going to give you an opportunity. Give me an opportunity. Right. And yeah. I'm like, all right. That's all you wanted. That's all I wanted. Like, yeah. give me an opportunity. Like, treat me fairly. Don't, yeah. you know. And they had drafted another guy, one of my good friends, you know, in the second round. And I'm like, hey, man, we can compete. And like, I, I feel like I can go toe-for-toe -to -toe with you. Like, we can compete for a spot. 
And so I ended up going for going to New England, and man, here we are eight years later. Wow. So walk walk us through that. Like you go to New England, and you're. I just you're don't there. make people understand like, what an undrafted free agent means. It means like you're doomed to not make it. You know, like you, know, you, you are there yeah. for camp. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's it. Yeah, I mean, you get there, you get. I got the um, it's your OTAs, rookie mini camp, and rookie mini camp. Like they trying to kill you. It's not fit. Like people, it's not has nothing to do with football. <laughs> right. It has nothing to do with football. Like a lot of the young guys don't realize that. Yeah. They're like, oh, I've been backpedaling. They don't care. Yeah. Like they got enough film on you. That's not what you're in rookie mini camp for. Ain't that to test your mentality? Yeah. Like, can they kill you and you come back? Like, how do you respond to that mm-hmm. adversity? Because they got to decide in the spring and in training camp, like what type of player are you gonna be in January in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, do I bring you along for this journey? Like, what right. type of player are you when there's some adversity come? Like, how you going to respond? Right. So, rookie minicamp, they're trying to kill you. They're trying to kill you. And I, I was prepared for that. Especially at the Patriots, dude. I mean, yeah. that's that team is just something else. I mean, you're talking about coming into a, coming into a program where you've got arguably the best quarterback who ever played the game. And be a part of that team, you yeah. got to be special. Yeah. you got to be cream of the crop, and you've got to have a mentality like no other. Uh-huh. The mission was set. I mean, the year before I got there, they just lost an AFC championship. Um, so they just lost it. At AFC this point, they had, they had already won. They won. They won. They won what? One or two? They won, no, they won 14. That was one of the Seahawks. And then they lost in the AFC championship the year before I got there. Um, and then so this is my rookie year coming in. And like I said, the, the pieces are in place. Like, you know what I mean? Was, what was that culture like there? Like was it immediately when you got yeah, there? It was just a that. different culture. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. It was for me. It was home. Like it was my dad. Like it, it's it, that's right. why I, that's why I like lasted that. there for so long because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just show up and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Don't complain about it and just it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And so, like for me, it was easy. Like looking like that part of it was easy. Like the football part of like my career was easy. Um, just because it was just show up. I can do what you ask me to do. And, and I can excel at that. You know, that, that, that part was, was easy. I think for me, my personal battle, like going into football, like was my off the field, was like life. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, you're dealing with a lot going into life, but you're a young kid and now football is not just a game anymore, it's your job. Yeah. It goes from being your job. And so no, no one really cares what's going on at home. Right. They're not supposed to, you're not asking you to. Why? Because it's your job. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? So that was the biggest struggle for me was just off the field more so than on the field. But like the culture there was just show up, you know, work, do the quote unquote, do your job. And that was easy for me. I don't think, I don't think a lot of people, that, I don't think a lot of people understand that, especially a lot of people that watch football on TV. Like this is a job. Yeah. Like this is a job, this is a business and this is what you do for your work, you know? And, and you have to handle that in a way that's far more than just playing on Sundays, for sure. A lot of people don't see that. Now, I can paint the picture for you. So we in, this is August, August training camp. I'm like, all right, I'm about to make this team. I'm like, all right, they, they like me, I'm here. Like, it's cut day, final cut day. Man, <laughs> listen, it's final cut day. And it's like, if they, if they call you, you cut. If they don't call you, you say. And so I go out, they got, um, it's a little river in Boston called like the Charles River. I get a little kayak. I'm like, they cut me. I'm gonna take my time getting back into the <laughs> And they cut, I'm gonna take my time getting back in that facility. So like I'm out there, I'm a kayak, I'm just hanging out, like checking my phone every now You're and then. On the day. river? Yeah, I'm out on the river. Like, it's awesome. cut day. I'm out, I'm, yeah. I'm out, I'm like, yo, if they cut me, I'm taking my time getting back to Foxborough <laughs> just because I want to soak this in. Yeah. And yeah. so I go, I think it's the cut, cut time is like four, four o'clock, and I look. Look, it's four, one, four, two. I was like, I don't know how official this is. And hey, they don't call me. So then you get a message later, hey, come back into the facility. And you know, it, it kind of started from there. So like just to be in that mindset of like, you talk about the undrafted, like being an undrafted guy. Like, so I signed a lease, you know, it's Boston, nothing's cheap out of Foxborough, I think. My lease was two grand a month. My, um, my signing bonus was like, 10 grand, you know, I bought my parents a washer and dryer. So I had about like $6,000 in my account with a two grand lease per month and yeah. they can cut me like Any tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. And so like, that was the risk. Like I, yeah, I still yeah. got on was like, no, nah, I'm gonna be here. And so like, that was the space I was in. Like I, my back's against the wall. You know, I got a daughter, yeah. I got like 
life. I'm life yeah. at this point. I'm straight out of college to where you're on scholarship. You getting free meals in the calf, like yeah. So hey, I got a two grand lease with six grand in my yeah. account, and they could. A lot, of, lots another thing. A lot of people don't understand, like when you first get to the league and undrafted free agent, like you better be very wise with your money, or it's yeah. gonna be gone really quick, okay. you know. And what what do you think was it? Because again, that that season, your rookie season, I'm pretty. Your rookie season was was the comeback. Yeah. That was yeah. that season itself was pretty pretty special that obviously that that comeback probably the greatest comeback in in Super Bowl history you know I don't know a, yeah. a, a better a better comeback than that but what what do you think it was that solidified that year because I feel like as an undrafted free agent like you got that one year to like either they are gonna like you and you're gonna stick around or you know it's probably not you know you're gonna be a P squad guy bounce back and forth and what do you think solidified that in that year? Because you got a chance to play some, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, every, you got every brick wall they put in front of me, I ran through. Yeah. And so they knew what they had, and mm, you know what cool. I mean? They knew how I was going to respond to adversity. They knew the little things. They knew I'd never miss a meeting. I was never late for a meeting. Like yeah. the, I, accountability and dependability. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I was accountable. You know, if I made a mistake, hey, coach, I did that. That was my fault. That's um, cool. if, they should be there, you know, at three o'clock. I was always there. You know, I was there on time just because that was, those are the little things, right. you know, like I said, how I was raised, the little things. So a lot of those things that people don't realize, like that matters, like that matters. You got to know who you are in this world. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a guy, you could go get another one of them. Yeah. There's a lot of guys, five, eight, five, ten, walking sure. around 185 pounds. Yeah. You know, if you six, eight, you know, 350, you got yeah. a little bit more leeway. That's yeah. just that, but that comes the realization of who you are in this sure. world. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's not a lot of those guys, so his value goes up because he's not easily replaceable. So yeah. he might can be late, you know, five or right. ten towns, and I can't expect to get treated like him because we don't we don't hold the same value. And so I think a lot of guys and a lot of these kids, they come in and they see one guy doing something and they think, well, I can do that. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, that's a ten year veteran with you know thirty forty million dollars in his account. Done it. Right. Y'all are not the same. You know no. what I mean? Y'all are not the same. Yeah. And so like that that was a big part of it. But what solidified for me was just. Everything they asked me to do, I did it. I checked off every box. You know, that's good. And that's it's awesome. That's that's that to me the best advice I give to people is just do do what you asked to do. And like at the end of the day, I always say that's my fallback. Like I'm I'm a system player. I could I could go left off the cuff and I'll probably make a few more plays and I probably might give up a few more plays. But if I do exactly what the coach told me to do, when he comes to when I come to the sideline, he's like, hey, why what happened on this play? Hey, you told me to do this. Mm. And that's what I did. Yeah. And those were the results. Yeah. And he got to live with that. Like, right. there's, no, there's nothing else. He can't come to the sideline, hey, we told you to go left, and you went right. And then yeah. you got to explain that. You know what I mean? What was that season like for you? Because, again, I mean, you have so much adversity up to this point, right, to being an undrafted free agent to now you're playing in the Super Bowl, bro. Like, as a rookie, like, that's crazy, right? And, and, and all of that kind of coming full circle to being a part of that game, which – I remember at halftime thinking like, what? Like, what is going on, right? Like, there's no way. Yeah. What was that like for that that season specifically to be your rookie season? And what did that, what do you think that did for your career? Just mentality wise, again, being a part of a locker room that at the time, I mean, you're talking about some of the, the just the, the core guys of the NFL that were just really good, good NFL vets, right? Like. What was that rookie season like for you? Um, I think I take the mindset, I seen it all. Yeah. Like I, I had the opportunity to see it all. Like you said, I come in to one of the best franchises to be run from one of the best owners to one of the best coaches to one of the best quarterbacks mm. to like some of the best players. And I got to soak that all in and just be a part of it and learn. And I took that mentality, like I'm learning from you guys, like how to operate. Um, but just to see what it looked like to be at your best, to see what that took, to see guys, like I said, like Tom, to come in every day and, and see the mentality that he comes with. And I got laugh now playing because it's like, I look across sometimes and the guys on the center and I'm like, no, this <laughs> I ain't laugh TV. because yeah, yeah. Yeah, my rookie year, I come into it and I, the Tom was what, year 15, 16 at this point. Yeah. So it's like, I'm trying to disguise 
as a defensive back to a guy who's been sitting here watching the same thing for 16 years. Yeah. Like, I, it's so, it, yeah. I got that opportunity. And I, and I cherish that because like, not a lot of people get those opportunities. Yeah. And like I said, I'm a coach who has been there so many times, who's, who's won and done so much. I got to sit in those meetings. I got to hear his advice, see his point of view of the game. How he what was it? What was it like? Because I've heard just his leadership ability, his ability to lead others. Like, what was it like playing with him, but playing across from him? Like, how contagious was that in the locker room? Right? Like, it had to be a level of just like, it's, this is either how you do it, or like, Tom's gonna get your ass out of here real quick. Yeah, but it's just more. It wasn't even that. It was just more of how he carried himself. Mm. Like it, man. Tom is so low to the ground. Like yeah. He's so humble. Like wow. with anybody who has the ability to be arrogant and yeah. to act, it, it would be him. Right. And if he's not acting that way, there's no other guy yeah. in that locker room that gets that sure. ability. And so everybody else had to fall in line. That's good. You it's know what I mean? Because if he's in here just sitting in his locker, yeah. just chilling, he's not running around the locker room. Act, Look at yeah. me acting. Yeah. So he created a standard. It was a standard. Crazy. And not by standard. his words. No. It wasn't his words. His actions. It was his actions. Yeah. Like OTAs, he's out there fighting and we're chat. Man, those were some of our best battles. Like to this day, yeah. some of our best battles were in OTAs against yeah. each other. Like the games what, was easy. What was that like though as a rookie, bro? Like your first your first time you're out there, you look across and you're like, holy shit, like this is TV looking at me. He's like, I got a little jet out here on an island. Like yeah, <laughs> a little bit, but like my mentality was like, and I don't mean in this disrespectful way. It was always I'm that too. Yeah. Like, I'm like you got to deal good. with me too. Like yeah. I always felt like that, not That's in good. an arrogant way. Not I don't have the accolades that he's no. done. As a, yeah. But just my mentality is if I'm out here on this field, you got to deal with me too. Yeah. Like I've always had the mentality That's like good. you are you. Like and I, I respect everything you've done, but you got to deal with me too. Wow. And so I've always had that mentality. But you look up like some of our best battles. You got you got to think we had a squad too. Yeah. We got Hightower, we got Chong, we got McCordy. We had so many so many guys on defense wow. that like. On the offense, you got Grunt, you got Edelman, you got those guys, James White, and we're just going back and forth. Like every, like we'll come out one day and we'll kick their ass at practice, and the next day, you know, Tom, like, hey, no, nah, we can't let that. And it, it was, man, that was some of our best battles That's to good. where the game just was easy because people, it wasn't no yeah. Brock and Julian yeah. lining up against us on Sundays. Right. Like, man. wasn't Tom Brady at quarterback on Sundays? That's the beauty of it, man. It's just a bunch of people getting better. Yeah. Just, just sometimes you get the best competition by just your own guys. Yeah. You know. Having a good group of like guys that want to compete, like that want to win, and like when that culture is changing, like not not just in the facility, just as the youth, the guys that are coming in now, yeah, they don't have a, a knowledge of like what hard work really looks like. Want to want to ask something? You know, being at that level, being at that program, that organization, with all the stuff that we're saying about you, did at any point. At that being at that level, do you ever did you ever feel like you had some type of imposter syndrome? Like you were so gr grateful to be there, and you didn't you didn't feel like you necessarily deserved to be there. For sure, like for sure, and, and to an extent of like, I think it was more of I wouldn't say I didn't deserve to be there. Yeah, but like waiting for something to happen. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, I've dealt with a lot of adversity. Like, so, right, so yeah. what's next? Like, what's going to be next? Like, I'm, I'm knowing it's not just going to go um, picture perfect. So I always had that mentality. all right, what's going to be next? Yeah. Like, undrafted guy, I walk in the building every day. There's a little, there's a seat right by the doorway when you walk in that the guy who cuts guys sits at. And, like, I'm talking about, I, I swipe my key card, and it's one door and the next door. You know, it's a little office yeah. area. And every day I'm just looking, like, like kind of looking like, can I keep going? Like basically ask permission, can I keep going? And I did that for the first three or four years of my career. I was gonna ask you, was there like, at what point, what's the, your first contract, right? So you have, your your, your first contract was probably one year, was it a one year, no, three No, it year? was a three year. Three year yeah, deal? Three year deal. So after that, so you, have, so you, go, you go to Super Bowl your rookie year, you guys, oh, it's not back to back, was it? Three in a row. Three in a row. Three in a row. Oh yeah. my god! So your first three <laughs> years in the league, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, so at this point in time, do you feel like there was something along that way that solidified you, or was it just like we're gonna keep this team together as long as we can? Um, I mean, one thing you learn, like it was always changing. Like even from our first year, every team was different. Like yeah. and how we won was different. No two teams in the NFL are ever the same. 
And so I got to kind of see that. Like going to the Super Bowl three years in a row, every team was different. Like every, mm-hmm. every one of them um, just had different characteristics, you know, different streams, just different things that yeah. why we won, our reasons of why we won. And that was something Coach would always say in the offseason. He said, we got to figure out how this team wins. Mm-hmm. Like it's going to be different right. than how another team, like how the team we had last year was and figuring out how this team wins. But just going three years in a row, uh, I gained that knowledge, like I said, of understanding, like, every team is different. You know, my second year, I actually missed the Super Bowl. I got hurt in the um, – I got hurt in the playoffs. But, you know, my Auburn career taught me how to deal how with injuries. Deal with injuries. Like, right. all right, like, let yeah. me let yeah. me deal with this. You know, my third year – then my third year, I come back, you know, playing, playing corner, um, getting a lot of playing time. We were good. We're going to the Super Bowl. And, like – a week, a week before the Super Bowl, we had one game plan, and then the week of the Super Bowl, they come in and switch our whole defensive game plan. Coach Belichick comes to me. He says, can you play safety? And I'm like, yeah, I, I can do that. I can do that. Yeah. The only reason he asked me that, because a few weeks before, I had scout team. I'm running out on scout team. I got Tom Brady over there. Let so me you see were all, all, up to this point, you were playing just corner. Just corner. But like I go on scout team, I play a little safety just just to mess around. I, yeah, like I said, I had a college coach told me I couldn't play. Couldn't play safety. I couldn't play safety. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I couldn't. You became so, a utility man. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I go at practice. I play a little safety, and it was a play I can remember. It was a seam route, um, and Tom threw it, and I ran. And I kind of looked at it like you know I could have picked that off right, and like it was it was just one of those plays. It's challenging myself. Like if I can get him, like one of the. Gr- the rest of them I can get, yeah. you know what I mean? And so that gave me the confidence. And he came back, he said, could you play safety? And I'm like, yeah. I, I started safety in the Super Bowl and never played safety before. Wow. Like in yeah. my career, like I never played safety before. I started, yeah. led the team in tacklers in the Super Bowl. Wow. Like just, it all came full circle. That's just, that's just a byproduct of putting the team first before yourself. I mean, that's leading with that type of spirit, man, with that type of mentality of putting your team first, getting your team better, and what's greater good for the team. Yeah you get put in positions where you're respected by a coach to trust you in those positions. And then at the, at the level of playing in the Super Bowl, as in a, in a position that you've ne- you don't normally play, yeah. I mean, like, that's, that, that's crazy. That's yeah. mind-boggling. Yeah. No, nah, it looks like it came down to trust. But you don't, you're not given that trust. You earned it. Yeah. You know, and that, that had been two, three years prior to them seeing me come in every day, work hard every day, like just the little things that added up. And it was like, I can depend on him. Like, I know he knows. One, I knew the defense. You know, I had played D-line. I had played yeah. linebacker. I had, played <laughs> safe, I had done it all at that point. And then yeah. he knows the entire defense. Mm. We can put him in there. And, you know, it worked out. That's awesome. So, I, I think when I, look at, when, I, when I look at you as a man, as an athlete, on and off the field, I, I'll be honest, one of the things that really I respect the most out of you is your ability to be a father, your ability to show up off the field and to lead like off the field. Like I feel it's very easy when you when you get to the NFL to think I've made it, right? I've made it. I'm bigger, I'm better. I deserve more than, you know, praise, you know. You probably see egos, you deal with egos all the time in the locker room. Yeah. You've always been Jay Jones, bro. Always like that's that's the one thing about you that when I looked like you're not you're you're posting your family, bro. You're posting your kids, you're posting your wife, you're posting the things that like when I look at an NFL athlete, at somebody that's supposed to be a leader in this world, somebody that God's given the platform yeah. is bigger than the game. Yeah. Like for you, what is life outside of football like? What is it that that you live by in your life because you touched on it like, you know, being a senior in college and, and, and dealing with crying babies at night. I mean, that was a sacrifice you had to make as a father, right? But to never let your job or the NFL ever be more important than you being a father, yeah. you being a husband, you, you being present, right? What, what is that like for you? Man, um, I always like to say like who I am is a product of everybody else around me. Yeah. Like my parents, um, my teachers, everybody that I grew up from, anybody that I learned from, like mentors, because uh, they molded me. Um, and, and the people that I looked up to, like I said, my dad, um, waking up as a truck driver, to see my dad wake up every morning, you know, four o'clock in the morning, go to work, come home, go to work, come home. 
go to work, come home. And I was like, I can do that. Mm. I know what that looks like. I've yeah. seen that. Like, I know what it's like to go to work, come home, spend time with your kids. Um, and my dad, I saw an individual make sacrifices. You know, my, when he was driving trucks at night, he'd sleep during the day, go to football practice with me, turn around, go drive at night. Like, so it was like, what I'm doing now is easy, like compared to what I got to see growing up. And so I just, I just try to stay as humble as I can because I know it can all be taken away. Like at the end of the day, you're just a human being, you know, your bank account doesn't make who you are. Your status doesn't make who you are. You're a human beings. And I try to, I try to treat people with the same, you know, respect that I would like to be treated with. And I just always keep that mentality and, and family's all you got. Mm. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, my daughter doesn't, you know, she doesn't care that her daddy's in the NFL or he doesn't, he, that doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, you know, daddy, you know, he plays with me. Yeah. You know, when I come home, yeah. you know, um, they, my kids enjoy that. And that yeah. takes me to, you know, everybody likes to talk about that Kobe Bryant moment. And like that, that's my Kobe Bryant moment. We sat down with Kobe, this was my, my second year in the league. He came in, it was a group of us. We got to sit, sit in with a meeting. And he was like, my kids don't care I'm tired. They don't know that I'm tired. Okay. It doesn't matter that I'm tired. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't get to go home and I'm clocked off. Like I yeah. clock in when I go home, I'm dad now. <laughs> So, like and that that was exactly. that was reality to me. It set in to me that like when I go home, I didn't clock off. I'm, yeah, I'm right. done with work, but I just clocked into another job. I'm dad now, mm -hmm. and you know, and those are the memories that that's gonna matter to them. And that's hard though, because again, being especially during the season, right? Like, I mean, you're from sun up to sundown film. I mean, it's like locked in to be able to you know compartmentalize that and understand. You know, I'm a I'm a, I have a job, but my number one role is a father. How does that during the season? Do you have a routine? Do you have something that like, you know, at, at, you at, at tell you what time, I have. Yeah, listen, done, you like let me tell you what I have? I have a wife. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that, no, I have a that's wife. That's the key. Uh, that's a key. That's the key. I'm, I'm, I'm serious because I've not had that. Yeah. You know, I've had to be the single dad who've done it all. Yeah. I've, I woke up, I've got my daughter ready, you know, ready for daycare, ready for school, went to practice, came yeah. home from work. You know, got her ready, cooked the dinner, yeah. got her in the bed, watched it. Like, I've done that. Yeah. Like, I've done that. That was the hard part. I've done yeah. that. So then now, like, the space I'm in now, like, it's, a, it's a tribute to my wife because I get to come home and, like, dinner's cooked. Like, I don't have the look. Like, those things. Are, right. And so it's a team. Like, yeah. it's a team effort. And we you generally, we all do our part. And that's what makes me be able to be the person that I am. Yeah. When I walk into the rooms that I walk in and I go in the places that I am, it's because it's not just me. Like, it's yeah. never just me. It's everyone around me allowing me to be who I am. And, like, it's never just me. Like, I could never take credit for that. Yeah. That's good, man. That's pretty refreshing, man, because, like, I love hearing that. Because I'm real big on identity. And, you know, when football got stripped from me, I, I, had, I was a kid, you know, and, and football was my identity. But when it got stripped from me, I was lost. I didn't know, I didn't know what else there was, you know. And then so when you talk about being a father and – there is no like checking out, like you've got to clock in. I got a little girl coming on the way. And so hearing all that, it encourages me, man, to like know that, you know, I've got all these different places and like your, your identity is made up to whatever room you're in. So like when you're at in football, right? You're playing football, you're the baller, right? You're Jonathan Jones, the football player. But when you're at home, you're Jonathan Jones, the father, right? Because at the end of the day, your, your, your daughter's not gonna say, the first thing that comes out of her mouth is my daddy's an NFL football player. She doesn't player. care either. And no. she doesn't even know. And I can say that coming from a dad that played 13 years in the league. I didn't realize what my dad did till I was like 15, 16, 17 years old. And I was like, yeah. oh, wow, my dad played with Jim Kelly. Oh, wow, my dad played with Tom Magnitude. Brady. Like, he, she's Magnitude. got no idea. Your boy's got She's no getting there, though. She's, now, she's getting right. there. Like, yeah. she's, she's sometimes my worst critic. Like, <laughs> if, I miss a, no, I'm, if I miss a tackle, if I miss an interception... I'm gonna hear about it. I'm gonna hear about it. But it, 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 it's, cool. it's not. It doesn't matter. Like you yeah. said, the importance of it, what the magnitude of what that means. Of like, she doesn't understand that. It's yeah. just your dad. She knows like you're a good dad. dad. And it's like when you talk about your identity. Like I had the perfect yin and yang growing up with my parents because the same way I had that like hard rock of my dad and being this. My mom was the like she didn't care about football. Like my mom couldn't care if I ever played football. Hers, she cared about the person I was and the education that I had. Yeah. That's the only two things she cared about. Like, if I didn't have all A's, it wasn't no football. Yeah, like, it, was, yeah. it wasn't even going to happen. Like, it was, that wasn't a possibility. You know, and my mom wasn't letting that happen. Yeah. And so, like, I had the perfect balance of, like, my dad and my mom. My mom, all she cared about was my education. She couldn't, she'll, show, she'll support me, 
she supported football all day long. She didn't really care. Yeah. She's still learning football to this day, right. and she's been at every game I had since I was yeah. school. But it didn't matter yeah. to her. Yeah. Like, it didn't matter to her. She generally cared, like, what type of education. And she always had the quote, like, they can take a football from you. They can take a basketball from you. They can't take your mind. And she always instilled that in me. I bet she's super proud of you, though, right yeah. now. Because, yeah. I mean, clearly, you're a highly intelligent individual. I mean, you speak so well. You, you play ball so well. Um, how, how does she feel now where the heights that you've achieved? Um, my mom is a quiet lady. She's very quiet, and when she does speak, it's powerful words. And um, she's just proud. Like, she's proud of everything that I've done, um, everything I'm still doing. You know, and she's always that, like, what's next? All right, mm. now what's next? Like, you haven't arrived. Like, you never that's, arrived. What's next? That's awesome. Because right? yeah. she know, she always, she doesn't put a limit to my potential. Like, she, if I told her I was running for president, she wouldn't be surprised. She wouldn't yeah. be like, oh, are you sure? <laughs> She'd be like, all right, no. Like, yeah. Do you know that? Like, just generally, she doesn't put a limit to my potential. Um, but that belief is also, like, probably amazing to have in your corner as well, right? It's probably yeah. been a portion of the belief that you've been able to have in yourself when others wanted to doubt you. Oh yeah. It matters. Like building that support system. Not anybody. If you don't if you don't have, you know, your parents in your life, you know you gotta build a support system. Right. You gotta find somebody that when you wanna quit, because you're gonna quit, it's inevitable. You're human. Yeah. There's so many times I wanted to quit football. Mm -hmm. But either my parents wouldn't let me or my friends wouldn't let me. Just having that support system of somebody yeah. saying like, nah, like I see it in you still. Like it's still in there. And you you have to find a way to build that for yourself. That's awesome. So, man, eight years in the NFL, bro. Like, that's crazy. A lot of dudes, you know, they, 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 they don't even, you know, they don't even make it three. And so for you, like, what is it that, that is, is your ultimate goal as you move forward in your career? Because I'll be honest, like, you know, you were, you were nominated this year for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Like, to me, to some people, to, to a, probably a lot of guys who are playing in the league, that's one of the greatest awards you could ever even be up for. I mean, for you, you're, you're so active in the community. You're so active, you know, as a philanthropist and giving back to the community and making a difference. Like, what, what's, what, what is it for you that you, you understand, like, it's not about football. What is it that brings you joy with what you're creating off the field that truly brings fulfillment to your life? Um, I mean, truly that... Um, this is the start of my foundation. The Next Step Foundation was just like helping people. Like I always say, I'm a product of help. Like, yeah. So many people helped me along my journey that I can look back every decision that I made, like everything I can point to you, the exact individual that I follow behind in their footsteps. And like, I'm this way because of him or because of her, because of this. Like, and, and I wanted to create that foundation to give people like leadership, mentorship, mm -hmm. to give them someone to say, oh, well, this person can do that, then I can't. So a guy out there, 5'10", this guy can be in the NFL, yeah. I can't. So just, just literally to be a mentorship and to, to provide kids with different mentors, if it's not me. So the Next Step Foundation, that's the name of the foundation. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Because I see you're doing all, you do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. What is the focus of the foundation? What is your goal through the foundation? Exactly? Yeah. Just empowerment of youth uh, through like education. Like I said, my mom's big on education. Gotcha. Uh, we do a lot with STEM, technology. Right. Like I'm big, big in tech. Um, and just to next step, just generally that phase, if I can help you take your next step, like a lot of people don't need a lot of direction, yeah. they just need the next step, like put them on the right path. And so that's, that was my idea behind, you know, the foundation was to help kids find their next step, you know, and everybody's steps are different. You know, some yeah. guys want to be in the NFL, some guys don't, some guys want to run, be a CEO of a company. Well, I've got some connections, well, I can call a CEO of this company, I can connect you and you can see what that looks like, see what that looks like on a daily basis, because a lot of kids, they have ideas of things they want to be, but they don't get to see it. They don't yeah. know what it looks like. It's just an idea. But if I can show it to you, hey, this is normal. Like this guy, he wakes up in the morning, he wakes up at six, seven, he takes this call, like this is what it looks like, and you can do it too, you know, and, and just to provide. There had to be something in you, like as an athlete, right? I mean, bro, you go from a 10K signing bonus to making 100 times that almost in a year, bro. Like what, what is it that in your mind you're like, it's not about football, Right, like what can we do to, because any, any of these dudes, call it what it is, any of these dudes that are getting paid a bag, they can, they can do the same thing. Yeah. They can go out and make a real difference, you know? Yeah. Are, are they doing that or is their charity just to, to, so they don't have to pay taxes, right? Yeah. Like you're out in the community doing this actively, right? Yeah. Like what is it inside of you that says like, this is what my platform is for 
this is where I get fulfillment because there's there's something that brings yeah. more joy. I mean, bro, this is time. It's, it's this selfish. Is it's yeah. selfish of me because like I want somebody to come back, you know, five to ten years from now and say, hey, like I'm where I'm at because, because of, of you. you. Mm. Like because like th this yeah. time you came to my school or yeah. this time you spoke or you did this or you like because of you like this helped my journey and like that's the fulfillment I'm gonna get. Like yeah. just to somebody say like because of you I'm like all right that's the selfish part of it that's the fulfillment it's yeah. the like I'm where I'm at because of you because like I said I can point to the people in my life I got to sit back and I'm like hey like you didn't know I was watching you and when you did this I was watching you like yeah. I, I I'm this because of you. And so Devin McCourty, Matthew Slater, Patrick Chung, um, Delanis O'Neal, like all the guys that I've seen, like, hey, Delanis O'Neal was a guy, he went, he ran track at Mississippi State, not famous. Like, I'm where I'm at because of him. Because mm. he left Carrollton, Georgia and went to college. Wow. And I said, wow. oh, if you can do that, I can do wow. that too. And I, yeah. I clung on to him, like, hey, like, nah, show me this. Mm. Like, it was whatever you doing, I want that. Like, I want to yeah. be a part of that. And so at work for me, you know, I, I have a way, I don't have B way, and I, I'm trying to show my way to people. Like, this is a way through mentorship. Like, just, you know, follow suit, follow in somebody's footsteps, do exactly what they did, and it's nine times out of 10 gonna lead you to the same place. So now you're, you're also that guy in the locker room that you got, again, here in a couple months, you're gonna have new draft class come in, <laughs> on, you know, uh, uh, free agents are coming in. These guys are looking at you now, like you're the vet, right? You're setting an incredible example, right? I mean, again, it's funny. I, I have a buddy that plays for the Dolphins, and, and he's like, the culture in Miami can just be really crazy, right? Again, we, we were talking about it prior to shooting. You're in the city, bro. There's a lot to do, right? Yeah. You can get into trouble. You can get into things. You can get into whatever you want anywhere. But when guys are coming into the locker room, like, what do you feel like your role is now as a vet in the locker room? It was... I'm watching that guy at the door when I walk in to see if he's going to tell me I can come in or not to now. Like, this is my home. I help build this place. I help be a smart, small part of building this, this, this dynasty here, right? What is your role now as a vet for these guys? Um, just to be an example. Like, any way I can help them. Like, I, I enjoy helping them. Like, just to, if it's on the field, more so off the field than on the field, yeah. you know, because... I don't feel I give you advice, but you got coaches for that. You know what I mean? You can you can watch from me. I can give you my insight. You know, all day, every day, I can do that. But just most guys don't make it in the league not because of their on the field players. They're off the field decisions, and it's yeah. like that's that's where because there's not a lot of mentors. Like when you clock out of the building, everybody goes their own way. Yeah. Um, every, you know, the rookies go their way. The older guys go to their family, and that's the disconnect. And so just, just to bring those guys in and show them, like, hey, man, like, just put your head down and grind. I promise you, you won't regret it. Like, no one ever regretted working a lot. Like, not yeah. the, I work too hard, you know what I mean? You know, you're not going to regret that. You'll say, oh, dang, I went to the club a couple of times, and I, I wasn't my best self the next day I went to work. You'll yeah. probably regret that, but you're not going to regret, like, just working hard. Yeah. And so just start with that. That's yeah. good. So what's next for you, man? I mean, again, you know, you said he's a man said, of many skills. Said, I know that. <laughs> you said you want to play. You want to play till you want to play till year twelve. But I mean, you're flying airplanes. <laughs> you know, you're, you're you're talking about maybe another bringing another little baby into the world soon. Man. Uh, I mean, you're gonna have a whole basketball team here before you know, know it. Right? <laughs> oh man, what's next, man? I mean, I love I love to see the pilot the pilot side of you, and I, I think that's extremely cool because. It's something that you're pursuing while you're playing, which I feel like it's it's really easy for guys who play to like forget that they need to have hobbies and things that they enjoy outside of football. Yeah, yeah. You can be so focused on on what you're trying to accomplish, but you have these outlets now that are probably like very like stress like stress relieving and like you know you mentioned flying is like he flew here yeah, for sure. Yeah, he I, flew I here. landed here today. But um, yeah, just just to find other things that interest me like outside of football and just to continue to explore like myself yeah. because like you never you never done growing up if you just say like oh football's it and that's all I love like no nah, it's so much this world is so big it's so vast there's so many things to do and just traveling I love to travel and learn learn from people meet people learn their stories you know see what they're about that's something I genuinely enjoy doing um, but definitely aviation like aviation has my attention right now and there's, there's so many avenues within it um, but it's it's that perfect combination for me between like information, uh, knowledge, there's a lot of knowledge base to it, but then there's also like skill, like athleticism, hand-eye <laughs> coordination. So like it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of, 
it's a lot of things that incorporate in aviation that just define like who I am, you know, yeah. as a person. It's kind of that. I feel like you love to be balance. challenged. Yeah. Like you love the challenge of learning new things. Yeah. Because aviation is not easy at all. No, no. I mean, it takes a very highly intelligent person to, to learn those things. Um, man, that's awesome. Yeah. No, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot that goes within it. And I just, like I said, I enjoy it. But who knows? Just continue, continuing to build it out, you know. Continue. I'm sitting here and I'm reading. I, I was looking at your Instagram and it's funny. You posted, you posted a post a while back. I think it was like June of last year with the McLaren, right? And, and again, the car is cool, but yeah. I don't know how many people really read that caption, yeah. right? And that caption goes and it's talking you know, to younger Jay and then it's talking to you know, the current Jay and then the future Jay, right? I, I challenge people to go read that. It, you know, be, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna read it on here, but go read the, the message. Don't just look at the picture. I think too many times people can look at the picture and not understand what the message is. And so obviously you've been through ups and downs, you've, you've been through adversity, you've been through highs and lows, you've been through some of the biggest moments you could ever go through in this life, playing in, you know, in Super Bowls, I mean, on the biggest stages. What's your ultimate goal in life? I mean, dude, you've accomplished what most people would say would be the ultimate goal. I mean, to, to, to make it to the NFL, to, be, to, to win a Super Bowl in the NFL, like what, what's the ultimate goal for you? Because what I know of you is like your life is bigger than football, right? Your, your vision is bigger than football. Football is, 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 is not who you are, it's just what you do. What do you want next for, for life, man? For me, um, to be remembered, but not in the sense of like football or anything like that, to be remembered by the people who I touch, that I matter, to mean something to someone, to where two generations I'm not dead. Like my grand, after my grandkids, they want to speak of me. Yeah. Like I want to be remembered. I want, and I know people talk about legacy, legacy, and, and, and not in the sense of like, I want them to build statues of me or anything feasible, but just my presence. Like what I stood for and who I was as a person that when people were around me and they still speak of me and it's always in a good manner. That like you never run out and someone says, oh, he did me wrong or he was this type of person. That's what I, that, that's what I want for me is just to continue to, spread who I am, like who my parents raised to, to as many people as I can. So, uh, you know, me personally, I, I, you and I were kind of on the same thing because like there's two greatest things I want in my life, which is my daughter that's coming into this world. Once I leave, she's going to be a spinning image reflection of me, of what I've instilled into her, what I've taught her, even the silliest things I say, right? My catchphrases, my dance moves. I don't have any, but my dance moves, everything. <laughs> That's who I'm gonna leave in the world. I feel like that's a lot what you're gonna do, but also, I told Zeke this before, but my ultimate greatest goal in life is at my funeral, I wanna stack, I wanna pack up a stadium. Yeah. You know, I have a foundation I'm gonna be starting pretty soon, and with your foundation, um, I think with how many people you're helping in this world, bro, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna pack up a stadium, yeah. you know? I mean, that's, think about that. Like, you're gone, but everybody that you helped in this whole world is gonna be sitting there honoring you because you were the help, you know? And that's that's something amazing, bro. Yeah, nah, that, that mean a lot. That mean a lot. Cause I mean, that's that's what this life about. It's, it's about people. Like, what what about do you people. always say? You say, people aren't gonna remember what you gave them. People aren't yeah, gonna what people you will never them. ever remember what you say to them. They'll always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. Cause when you, like I was telling Zeke this man, when he lost his dad, we, we both lost our dad. But all I remember about my pops was how he made me feel when he drank his little McDonald's coffee outside the fence while he watched me play football. He was cheap as can be. So he would take me to get some McDoubles and McDonald's, and I thought he was highballing. You know, I thought he was balling because he was giving me a cheeseburger every day. But in reality, it's just it was the small things, but it made me feel loved. It made me feel seen. It made me feel like I mattered to him, that he was proud of me, he, was, he loved me. You know what I mean? Smallest things like that. He That's never nice. would say, you know, I don't remember a lot of the things he'd say. I just remember who he was to me as a father. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, man, they always just remember how, you know, how you made him feel. How you feel, yeah. I mean, my daughter, like, we went, we was at Bush Gardens like about a month or two ago, and she was chasing around lizards, like trying to find a lizard. <laughs> Couldn't catch it. Couldn't catch right. it. Nothing. And so I'm out in the backyard the other day and I, I grab a lizard and I put it in a little canister for her and I take it to her. 
you would have thought I gave her a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you you would have generally thought I gave her every Barbie doll she could have imagined just simply because how you make her feel. Like in her mind, she was like, I wanted she that wanted a lizard. To catch that I wanted lizard a lizard. So and my dad bad. got me a lizard. Yeah. Like, you could have went to the store and bought you a lizard. Yeah. But for her, like, no, my dad caught that lizard. Like, yeah. my dad, little things like that. Like you said, kids yeah. will remember how you made them feel, and those are the memories. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So, We'll, we'll end with this because, you know, we've touched on a lot, but there's a lot of people out there that I think are being told they're too small, being told they're, they're, they're not a safety, being told they're not going to make it. Whatever the limitations that somebody else is putting on them, maybe the same limitations people tried to put on you. What's your message to the underdog, to the guy who's too small, to the guy who they say can't play safety? What's your message to that guy? The only way to prove somebody wrong is to go out and do it and, and not talk about it because people go back and forth and debate, or oh, I can, I can, I can. And, and you'll spend too much time with your words trying to prove to somebody or change their mind that you can. The only way to do it is to just go out and show up. Like, be that person. Be the person you know you are because only you know what you're capable of. Like, yeah. your parents don't. They might have an idea. Your fans, your family, they might have an idea of who you are, but only you know who you truly are and just go out and be that person and then I have to sit back and say, Don't well, I guess he was. It's awesome. For sure. Appreciate you, my Appreciate brother. You. Appreciate, Appreciate you, you, man. Appreciate you. What's up, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Get Back Podcast. If you like this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe and follow on all platforms at the Get Back Podcast. We do enjoy sharing the greatest comeback stories and thank you so much for tuning in. Get back, right. Yeah. I had to get back, right. Get back, right. Yeah. I had to get back right. Fell off, lost my cool. Whoa, say, bounce back, got dirt on my shoes. Come back right. When you got real power, you can't lose. I had to get back right. Yeah, get back right. Yeah, top down, head back. Ride by the high beats, don't fair facts. Money more now, I don't wanna hear trap. I play Rick James when I'm in traffic. I've been doing this since fifth grade. I've been doing this since I've been saved. I've been rock crowds on a big stage. I've been made hits with some big names. Yada, 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 yada. Bought a Mercedes for my baby mama. VIP, rockin' Dolce Gabbana. I went to the Grammys and I took my mama. Bottles on bottles on bottles and models on models on models and dollars on dollars. Yeah, that don't help me when my soul wanna holla and I'm feeling the pain and I'm dealing with drama. Woo! That's too deep. Yeah, guess I better fall back. Nah, get this work. You should've wore a hard hat. They told us don't work in the summer. I told them I'm working on something.